I know a lot of you guys have watched some of our older content talking about the engine, talking about the reliability, and overall just what my driving experience is with this vehicle. Instead of 2022 Jeep Wrangler Extreme Recon Rubicon, it's got the two liter turbo. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about just more of the kind of finer details about driving a Jeep like this. That is lifted with a three and a half inch Clayton kit and then also the 37s and bead locks on it. So I know a lot of folks talk about how does it drive? What's the road noise? What's this and that like? Today I want to kind of go over a little bit of all of that. Talk about the things I enjoy and then maybe some pet peeves that I have and some things that I want to address. Ryan and I are sitting here in our brand new merch that is live on the site. The biggest thing though is we've actually uh, decided to order something pretty expensive for the channel and I think you guys are really going to like it. So we're going to talk about it at the end so make sure to stay tuned. So without any more talking, let's get right into this one. But let's talk about the setup that I've got on this Jeep. We've almost owned it for a year now. So I factory ordered it last spring, picked it up in the beginning of summer, and I've almost had it for a year. We've done a lot of modifications to it. And I say a lot, but you guys have seen crazier builds. Let's talk about what's on this Jeep and why I chose it right away. So the biggest thing that we did to this Jeep right away, you know, we've installed a lot onto it, but probably the biggest one was the Clayton three and a half Overland Plus suspension system. Now I absolutely love the Clayton kits. The ride fit and finish is very smooth and I really just like how beefy all the quality components are. So they are a sponsor of the channel and I just wanted to put that out there too but I've run a lot of brand lift kits and you guys a lot of people ask me which brand do you recommend? What shocks do you recommend? I'm running the Clayton kit and I've got just the standard Fox 2.0 monotube shocks. I know a lot of folks, the big craze is these Fox 3.0 bypass shocks with 4,000 adjustable clicks on it, and you're just daily driving it to work or something like that. I find that investing that much in shocks, unless you're truly using the Jeep for what it's intended for, that's a lot of money to put out there. I've had the Fox 2.0s on a lot of my builds. They've held up extremely well, and the price point is great. I think I paid maybe 120 bucks a shock, I mean, they're not the absolute smoothest butter shock, but they do a good job in absorbing and dampening the road and their aluminum body. So they do a great job of not overheating, getting any of that shock fade. That's a big one I always get asked is what size lift. So this is a three and a half inch and I have the Fox shocks on it. So I've got all eight control arms, the track bars, sway bar links, springs and shocks, the whole setup. If you guys want to watch a detailed video on how we did that, be sure to check it out. We'll link it down below in the description, or you can just browse our channel and check out all the other cool videos. Also, if you guys want to pick up a Clayton lift, here's like the plug for it. DRC5, so dirt road cred, just DRC5. That'll get you 5% off. Now that might not sound like a lot, but on a $3,000 lift kit, that adds up pretty quickly. If that can save you a little bit of coin and help go into another mod, that's a good thing there. So use that coupon code if you're interested in a Clayton kit. Sorry for the shameless plug there. I just wanna help you guys save a little bit of cash. With that being said though, I get this question a lot. Terraflex shocks, Falcon shocks, Fox shocks. Should I go coilover? Should I go this? With my setup, my daily driving, the wheeling I do, the towing the trailer, the Fox shocks do great. I had the Falcons in the past too, and I gotta be honest with you guys, I didn't think they adjusted as well. I had the 3.3s and while they looked really cool, they were very hot, flashy items. I didn't think they adjusted crazy well for me. That might've been the fact that I was running a Nitto trail grappler that was extremely stiff, but it just did not want to adjust. Now, speaking of that, let's jump into the wheel and tire setup that are running because I think that does affect my daily driving in this. And if it's something that you wouldn't want to affect it as much, you'd probably not want to run the same setup that I have. So currently on this Jeep, I am running a 37 by 12 and a half on a 17 inch wheel. And that is the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss MT. Now I did a lot of research before going with this tire and I've owned a lot of tires. Personally, my favorite in the past was the Cooper Discoverer STT Pro. I could not get stuck in those tires. I could try and spin out in the snow on my JK on 37s and it wouldn't even spin them. My dad had them on his old JK and he loved those tires as well. We were huge fans of them. And when I was looking around, I wanted something a little bit more aggressive on the sidewall. And honestly, I've been seeing a lot of guys trying out the Mickey Thompsons. So I was like, you know what? Let's try a little bit of a new tire. We'll do it for the channel. We'll see how we like it. If anything changes in the future, we can always modify it and go to a different brand. But coming from an all-terrain, a BFG KO2 that was stock on this vehicle, it was good to get that more aggressive tire. 
Now, speaking of the wheels that I'm running, so on this vehicle, I am running the KMC Tank B locks. So we've got the 17 inch, they are 17 by eight and a half or 17 by nine. I'm not looking at a phone right now, so Ryan, correct me if my specs are wrong on those, but we're running the 17 inch wheels and the biggest phase lately has been, or biggest fad, has been going to larger, going to the 20s, running 42s on there. I like a good amount of sidewall, and I like the ability to air down and have that sidewall poke out and really give me better traction when I'm trying to grip on the side of the tire. So I went with those. Now I am running the beadlock configuration. So with that being said, there's a lot more rotational mass on my setup than was stock. So I've got a lot more rotating weight on here, and I gotta tell you guys, this is probably the heaviest setup I've run. Besides the 40 inch BF Goodrich tires that I was running in the past with ATX slab wheels. That was a massive setup and it was really heavy. Now as the years go by, I get older, my bones feel older and my muscles do too. Picking up this 37 and putting it on the spare back here, it was a feat. I mean, it was really tricky. So with this setup, it's a heavy, it's a heavy, heavy setup. And I would say if you're gonna be doing crazy cross country adventures, this probably isn't gonna net you the best fuel economy. But at the end of the day, it suits me for the look I was going for, for the drivability, and then also just for the use that I plan on intending with this Jeep. Now, so that was kind of two things, right? So we talked about the lift kit that I have on here. We talked about the wheels and tires. I'm very happy with the setup of both. I gotta tell you with the Mickey Thompson's, the ride is a little bit stiffer than the BF Goodrich KO2. That's because the load range is higher. It's either a D or an E, I can't recall without looking at it, I believe it's a D, but it's going from the stock BFG KO2s that are a C load rating. Now the load rating is how much weight you can put on the tire and what it can comfortably hold. The C rating is perfect for the Wrangler as a midsize SUV and really does a good job at giving it enough cushion and not making those sidewalls too firm that it will not absorb the road. You go up to like a load range G or a crazy high tire, you are really gonna feel that when you're hitting potholes or little things like that. It's gonna feel it no matter how good your suspension is. So this is a little bit stiffer. I've noticed the potholes in town that I hit the other day were a little bit more aggressive in this than it was my dad's Jeep, but there's a trade-off. Beefier sidewalls, better off-road, a little bit more of the drivability goes away, but we're in a lifted Jeep, so we didn't go too far. We've just made it maybe a little bit stiffer than it used to be. The next topic I wanna to get into. So we've been asking, how is the engine holding up? What kind of engine did you use if you didn't look at the previous videos? I went with the 2.0 liter turbo. Now I'm in a 22 Wrangler, which means that it's just the two liter turbo. I was happier with this engine because of the simplicity of it. I know it's not naturally aspirated. Comparing this with the 3.6 e-torque, this had a lot less going on. The e-torque has a 48 volt battery system underneath the vehicle. It has the e-torque system that goes up front on your accessory drive and helps turn over the belt and it's just a little bit more complicated than I was used to and I didn't want to pay the extra price for it. So I went with the 2.0 liter turbo and I gotta tell you guys, I have been very happy with this engine. It has a lot of pep off the gate and then I've included that I've installed the race chip GTS tuner on here. So that does a great job of giving me a little bit more pep or dumbing it down and giving me eco mode which helps me save some miles per gallon. But speaking of that, so we've got the two liter turbo. I'm very happy with that engine. And I would say I've owned three sixes. I've had 5.7 Hemi swap Jeeps. This thing gets up and goes. It's not any sort of speed racer, but it does a good job of getting up and out of its own way. My dad just the other day made a comment to me that his has a lot more pep than he was used to in his 2016 JK, which speaks a lot to me because it is a smaller engine. Next thing I wanted to talk about. So someone asked just the other video, you know, do you think you're getting a little bit better mile per gallon because of the gear ratio and typically we don't add gear ratio or swap those out to get better miles per gallon we swap them out to get power back that we lost so in this jeep they do come standard with the 456 gear ratio i'm happy with it but i still think there is a little bit more to be desired i would say if i was going to re-gear this i would probably go to a 513 just because i would want to knock it out right of the, right away with a 513, you obviously are increasing the teeth inside the ring and pinion, making it a little bit weaker, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much weaker to go just that little bit more, and you're gonna get a lot better drivability. The 456, though, will be very adequate with a 35 or even a 37 inch tire. That is a lower weight. So if you really look at some maybe forged wheels or some lighter wheels and lighter tires, you're not gonna notice that height difference as far as the reduction of power. We're on the highway now and what I wanted to do is just see what gear we can get into. So 
I would say that I haven't been primarily driving on the highway. It's a lot of city driving, maybe some country roads, depending on where I'm at in town. I do live and commute very, very close to my house now, so I'm not really running this up too much, but I'm in eighth gear. So I'm going about 60 miles an hour and my Jeep is still able to use eighth gear. With that being said, I'm getting passed by tractor trailers on the highway, which means I'm driving a safe speed, but I'm still very comfortable in shifting from seventh to eighth. I have not purchased the taser or updated the tuning for the tire size yet, which is affecting my miles per hour just slightly and some of my shift points. But overall, I'm still able to use eighth gear on the highway and I'm able to do it very comfortably. So the Jeep is not struggling to get into it and it doesn't feel like I'm too slow. So right now, let's kind of talk about it. I'm at 60 miles per hour, I'm in eighth gear and I'm at 1800 ish rpm to give you guys a point of perspective and use that little note in your head so 1800 rpm 60 miles an hour in eighth gear cruising very comfortably of course there's truckers that are flying by me but i would say that's comfortable if we bump it up let's say let's hit 70 we are on a 75 mile an hour highway right now so let's hit 70 and see how that feels and see what we're at so it just downshifted into seventh all right, so right there is 70 miles an hour, 66, 67. It's, it's very close with the tire ratio. All right, let's just do this. So we're seventh, we just went to eighth gear and we're hovering at about 2000 RPM. So very comfortable in my point of view with this RPM range. And we're still averaging, I didn't reset this for a while, 16.4. And I always keep the race chip at full race mode. So if I would turn it to eco, that would probably turn down but still really comfortable. I did want to bring up also, you see my TPMS light is on. I am running the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss MT tires at about 30 PSI. So I'm at 30, 31 PSI, depending on how warm it is. And that seems to be a little bit more of a sweet spot by getting better miles per gallon and then also softening up the ride a little bit. Now on that note, what I'm gonna tell you guys is that if you do run a higher load rating tire, by lowering the tire pressure, you're still able to ride at a comfortable level when it comes to the treads being dispersed, but you're able to smooth out that ride a little bit. You don't need to run 38 PSI on a load range D or E, especially on a Wrangler, or it is gonna ride ride as stiff as a buckboard. So I had mine originally up there just to make sure all the beadlocks were holding air and I had to lower it down pretty quickly because it was a very firm ride. And if you looked at the tires, they were riding on the very center. So I did have to change that out. I found about 30 PSI seems to work well for me. So overall though, guys, with everything that we're talking about, the last thing I did want to address is overall drivability. Now I do daily this Jeep. I have two vehicles, one's an old plow truck, and then I have my 22 Wrangler that I do enjoy daily driving, taking to shows. We drove it out all the way to Detroit to go to the auto show. But there are some things that I want to do yet, and that comes down to drivability. So a couple things that I would like to do. I know I mentioned gearing. I would probably only re-gear it if I was going to upgrade the axles because I don't know how much I want to put into these factory axles versus just completely upgrading the housings. With that being said, with that being said, with it being said, <laughs> with that being also said, it's because it, that's like my go-to. With that being go said, like, look, um, you want to stop at BK and get a Whopper? <laughs> where I whop your butt. <laughs> Anyways, so back to the drivability, like I said, the, <laughs> like I said, with that being said, back to the drivability, what I am getting at in this is that it drives smooth, it drives well, it does not drive like a Cadillac, so if you're expecting that kind of performance out of it, it really isn't that. It still has to have the capabilities of an off-road vehicle and then be able to take you out on some crazy adventures and get home. It drives very smooth, I'm happy with it daily, and I'm not too mad about the road noise. So some tires, I've heard some guys balancing tires, getting some crazy ones on the road, and I've heard stock Jeeps with imbalanced tires, and you guys know the sound of whoop, 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 spinning down the road. These don't sound like that, so maybe I'll just be quiet a little bit. I'm gonna get this back up to about 65 here, and then we'll just kind of listen to the road noise. I have a hard top, no hard top headliner, which is a mod that I do plan on doing, but here we are at about 60, and this isn't loud. I mean, Ryan and I can have a full comfortable conversation. The loudest thing is the wind actually hitting the windshields on these. I found them right away in the get-go, the way it's angled, and then maybe just some different things going on up there. The way it hits right up here at the top, I hear like a little, like not a leak, but just that's where the wind hits. But the tires aren't loud. The engine in this is very quiet. I think I'm honestly going to leave the stock exhaust on it just because on those longer road trips, if Ryan's editing in the passenger seat or I got a sleeping baby in the back, I don't want to wake him up by listening to my four cylinder going 
rum, 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 you know, flying around. It's a four cylinder. I'm not trying to impress anybody. Some future mods though. Let's, let's address that. Some future mods. While this Jeep does drive great, I continuously hop into other people's vehicles and realize how many more modifications that I can make. So Rich's Jeep, we just did a whole review. He has a $140,000 build, full Hemi swap. The first thing that I noticed getting in and driving that was the ease of turning the steering wheel. He had 39 inch tires on bead locks and I was able to turn it with one finger. I said to myself, Rich, did you like upgrade the steering? What's going on here? So he did the PSC, the big bore box, and then the lines attached to it. He didn't have the ram on it yet, but just the box and everything, the way it was set up, literally made the front tires turn like butter. So I gotta tell you guys, I am very much looking into that kit just because I think it does make the drivability so, so much better. This one thing I really took away from his Jeep, besides all the other cool features on it. If, so that vehicle, if you wanna check out the full review, it still is on our channel and it's still for sale. We had a couple parties interested. And the other thing I wanted to say is, although the title says it's 140K build, it is not 140,000 to buy it. Rich is good on the price and he's willing to work out a deal for a good buyer. So coming up in the spring here, I know a lot of you guys have been talking about, we've been sitting, we've been doing some more talking videos. It is the winter time, the shop is underway. It's under construction. We just leveled out all the soil. We leveled out all the ground. We broke ground on it and have all the fill in there already, as well as the stones for the concrete. So we've got all that set into place and ready to roll. But during the winter time, it's a little bit tricky for us to film outside, especially when it's 10 degrees out. So we've been doing some more talking videos, going about some news, but we cannot wait for this summer, this spring to have the full shop to use and really be able to do some crazy builds and some crazy modifications. On the Jeep, we've got a lot of cool things coming. So you guys saw the previous video, we have the Moto Belt bumpers. I did not get those coded yet because I've been, once again, my uh, kind of overthinking kicks in and I, do I think we should powder coat, we should spray paint, we should color match, or maybe we should rhino line them. We're gonna have a whole video discussing on the options and then going over exactly what I picked. We're gonna be adding those on. I've got a winch ready for it. And then I'm probably gonna add on the Fox ATS steering stabilizer on the front of this just to stiffen it up a bit when it's back in stock. We linked that in a couple videos and I think uh, the Dirt Road Cred channel officially purchased them all from Amazon because they haven't been in stock for a while now. So kudos to you guys if you got one because you probably sold out the manufacturer of steering stabilizers. We've got a couple new vendors that are coming on board and we're really excited to show you some more beauty mods and some more kind of sharpening up the Jeep as well as those really beefy upgrades for off-roading overland, etc. We've got a lot of cool things coming. Some big news though, ladies and gentlemen watching the channel. The other day, the Rubicon 392 20th anniversary came out. I didn't think it was gonna happen, and I thought personally that the amount of videos and content I had done on that with Ryan <laughs> is that it wasn't gonna come out. They were gonna really call my bluff and say, you know what, Matt, like, nah, we're not gonna do it. So it did come out, and immediately after, I was watching the reveal, and uh, I gave my friend Lindsay a call down in Dan Cummins in Paris, Kentucky, and I said, hey, how many of these do you have allocation for? And um, how good of a friend am I to you? So Lindsay said that she had a ton of people that were interested in it. Obviously we have a great working relationship and we've been talking for a while now. So we did it. The channel has officially ordered a 2023 Stingray 392 20th anniversary edition with the Napa red leather seats. They didn't really show you what the seats look like. They just gave you Napa versus stitched options. So I chose that because it seemed a little bit more bougie. And when you're purchasing a 90 plus thousand dollar vehicle, you can be a little bit more bougie. So took a leap of faith. We're going into severe financial debt to make this decision. And the ultimate thing is it's gonna be a write-off. Do you even know what a write-off is? We're gonna do it. Um, with this Jeep. In all seriousness, guys, we were really excited to, to be able to place that order. So Lindsay actually just sent me a little screenshot today of, we've got the Vaughn number. It was just placed the other day and she actually was able to place it, I think two or three minutes after it was released on Friday. So we got the order in. We were one of, I think, two that the dealership could actually order. We didn't opt for the the level two package, which is the full AEV outfit. If we're gonna do modifications, we're gonna do them ourselves, or heck, who knows, if the guys at AEV are watching this, send us out, we'll film the entire build process and really make this thing crazy. But we're excited for this, right? So I have wanted, and I can tell Ryan and he knows, my browsing history is Auto Trader, looking at 392s, looking at this, looking at that. I love the Hemi vehicles. I've had a Hemi swapped Wrangler. 
but ultimately it came down to which one was the right one. I know the price is extremely high, it just seems really out there. Everything's high like that. So our plan is to get it, really dive into it, check out that new grill, check out what parts fit, and really see what made it unique. We're excited to get it in, be able to drive it around and test out some new parts, and overall just kind of dive into what makes the 392 so special. I know a couple groups I've already joined on Facebook to talk about them, and I couldn't be more excited to see it come in. The reason we went with Stingray also is because of your votes on our community poll. So if you guys don't think we look at those, it was the highest voted color. I know I mentioned pumpkin, but Stingray was the highest voted color. So we listened to the audience when purchasing this expensive of a vehicle, and I think there was almost a thousand votes on there. So it was super high. You guys really were involved in that decision, and we're gonna be really happy to show it off. Plus, I think it'll look cool wrapped with the Dirt Road Cred logo and the Stingray background. But that's gonna be, I think, a wrap on this one. This uh, one's been a one more, one more, one thing. more thing. Oh, uh, oh, you, is this about? Know, is this about our IRS filing? Or? <laughs> I'll tell them about that. <laughs> Ask, uh, is, does anyone have a 10th anniversary? Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. Calling all all viewers out there, who's got a 10th anniversary, JK? Because what we're planning to do is when this comes in, we want to show an 03 Rubicon, a 10th anniversary, and then the 20th. So we can kind of have like grandpa, father, and son in one shot, yeah. you know? And then we'll also compare MSRPs on them and see how much the Jeeps have gone up in 20 years. Because I know a lot of things have gone up, but this one was like 92,000 MSRP, and I didn't add anything on it. So the color, that's the only thing I added, which was an option. But if you've got a 10th anniversary, if you're in the area, we'll hook you up with some swag once we get the Jeep in, and you guys will be in that video, you'll be included with it. And we just wanna kind of show them off. We're gonna show the 03, the 2013, and then the 2023 once it comes in. Once again, though, I really appreciate everyone hanging around with this channel. Like I said, merch is also live, so we already shipped out a few orders. We had probably a dozen orders the first day, which was absolutely awesome. And we're so happy that you guys from all over the country are able to rep our brand and really just get out there and earn yours with the Dirt Road Cred logo. So super happy to have everyone here. Thank you so much for making our dream come true. And I cannot wait to drop the next video and reply to all these comments on this one. Till next time though, my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred and I want you to get out there and earn yours.